Femi Falana challenges Abakuba over EFCC's legal status. Human rights activist and lawyer Femi Falana has written to the President of the Senate, Senator Godula Pabio, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, to oppose the view expressed by the ex-president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Dr. Olisa Abakuba, regarding the legal status of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The let- in a letter dated 17th of October, 2024, Falano disagreed with Abakuba's assertion that the EFCC is an unlawful organization. The letter read, Our attention has been drawn to separate letters addressed to the Senate and House of Representatives, dated 14th of October 2024, entitled R.E. Urgent Legislative Attention on Constitutional Reforms Relating to Law Enforcement Agencies with Anti-Corruption Efforts, in which Dr. Olisa Abakoba argued that the power under which the EFCC was established exceeds the power of the National Assembly. Convinced that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is an unlawful organization because it was unconstitutionally established, Abakuba stated that he was pleased to see many states challenging the constitutionality of the EFCC. Falana further stated that Abakuba did not cite any case to substantiate his claim that the, EFC, that the Supreme Court had criticized the EFCC's activities and existence. He stated, even though Abakoba did not refer to any particular case, he claimed that the Supreme Court has often criticized the EFCC. On the contrary, the Supreme Court has consistently supported the efforts of both the ICPC and the EFCC in combating the miasma of monumental corruption in the country. Falana also noted that Abakoba's position was based on the premise that the establishment of the EFCC violated the basic principles of federalism. It is pertinent to recall that in the celebrated case of the Attorney General of Ondo State versus Attorney General of the Federation and ORS in 2022, 27WRN1, the plaintiff Ondo State government challenged the constitutional validity of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission Act 2000. The Attorney General of Ondo State was the plaintiff, or the Attorney General of the Federation was, and, and the Attorney General of 35 states by the defendants. In that case, the late Professor Ben Mwabweze and Dr. Abakoba acted as Amisi Kurai, which I, while I was privileged to represent one of the defendants, it is on record that several defendants and the Amiki Kurai argued extensively that the ICPC Act was unconstitutional in every material particular. Both Amici Kurai urged the court to annul the ICPC Act. Upon critically analyzing the submissions of all counsel, including the Amici Kurai, the Apex Court upheld the constitutional vali- validity of the ICPC Act. In the leading judgment was delivered by Uwais CJN as he then was. It was held authorities for the Federation or any part thereof to promote and enforce the nation's responsibility to abolish all corrupt practices and abuse of power as enshrined in section 15 bracket 5 of the 1999 CFRN if this is a breach of the principles of federalism, then I am afraid it is the Constitution itself that facilitates the breach. As long as the aberration is supported by the provisions of the Constitution, it cannot be rightly it cannot rightly be argued that any illegality has occurred due to the Constitution's failure to adhere to cardinal principles, which are at best ideals or guidance in an ideal situation. The provisions of Section 13 thereof apply to all organs of government and all authorities and persons exercising legislative, executive, or judicial powers. 
He added, the provisions do not distinguish between the federal, state, or local governments. Again, the provisions of Section 14, Subsection 4 specifically apply to the government or council and the conduct of the affairs of governments or councils of such agencies. Even though we cannot comment on the merits of the pending case at the Supreme Court of Nigeria, it is pertinent to refer to it is pertinent to refer to members of the National Assembly to the case of Attorney General of Abia State versus Attorney General of the Federation. In that case, the plaintiff argued that EFCC's power to prosecute financial crimes did not extend to managing the accounts of the Abia State government. Well, what are your opinions on this? Make sure to leave them in the comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to turn on notifications so you can be notified when you upload daily content here on this channel and make sure to share this video with your family and friends so that they know what is going on and they can give their own opinion.